Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It's episode 82, I, I believe. Yes, I was right. And I am starting things off above this gigantic hole that we have expanded in the previous live stream. So this Sunday we hopped on, we live streamed for five hours in total. I think I did three hours of it at the beginning, just filling in all of the sand and everything like that, getting rid of all of the water because there was tons of it. And then myself and Grian also cleared out the water on that side. He completely showed me up by using sponges and basically wiping out the entire thing. And then we have made this much progress. So we have taken out half of this half of the hole in that live stream and it was massively massively successful but today my friends today is the day we are going to finish this thing the hole is going to be completed and i couldn't be more excited time lapse time and in this time lapse chat i thought i would give you some pretty exciting news for those of you who follow me on twitter and instagram you will have heard this before and also for those of you who have been watching the live streams you will have heard me mention this but it's something that I, I haven't mentioned yet in a YouTube video, and it's it's a huge, huge deal for me. So uh, I am going to be moving out of the studio because I have just bought a house. Uh, we have just bought a house. Me and Vicky are going to be moving in together, uh, and yeah, we're, we're going to have a house, which is extremely exciting because, of course, you know, for years, for the past three years, in fact, I have been renting out studios. So for those who don't know how I do this whole YouTube thing, because it's a bit of a strange setup, uh, the way that I do it is I... I basically travel to a studio every single day to record my video simply because back when I didn't have the studio it was it was a little bit strange for me waking up in the morning in bed and then walking like two steps to my computer sitting on the computer for 14 hours of the day and then at the end of the day turning the computer off and just going back into the bed staying in that one room every single day of my life where I mean it's just it's not the best mental space really to be quite frankly honest with you it just it doesn't feel nice it, i mean i just i didn't feel healthy so to have a dedicated space that i could go to that was like purposefully built for working it was awesome and it really really allowed me to grow up the filming channel as well because it meant that we had a workspace to work with where we could leave lights up and we could have things everywhere and we could have equipment all over the place i mean it, it worked absolutely perfectly but I think now it is time to actually move into a house and we're going to be moving out of the studio I'm going to I've, I've I've ended my tenancy here so that's going to be ending in the next six months and in the next two months I'm actually going to be moving into this house which is big enough to also have its own kind of studio area inside the house that's kind of the benefit of this is that I, I kind of have a studio but it's a separate room in the house so I don't have that problem where I wake up in the morning and stay all in one room I still have a dedicated place to go but it's just it's within my own home because to be frankly honest going to and from the studio all the time it was getting a tiny bit frustrating now I'm extremely excited for this house I mean it's it really is it's kind of I mean, I, I've always had this this idea in my head of what my, my perfect house would be and a little bit like the cars that I love, it, it just had to have a ton of character and this one does. It's an old converted chapel which is like a, a small church. Uh, it has a beautiful pitched roof so it's got a double height ceiling, it's got metal beams going across the top, it's 100 years old, it's got beautiful old wooden flooring. Um, and it's just, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So me and Vicky are going to be moving in there soon. And and we really can't wait. I mean, it's just, it's going to be awesome. And yeah, I'll probably post pictures of it on Instagram or wherever. Uh, so I'm sure you'll see plenty of that at some point in the near future. But anyway, that's that update. Let's pop back onto the Hermitcraft server. Ladies and gentlemen, this is returning for the last time. There we go. The machine has landed. And this whole... <laughs> This 1.2 million block hole has been dug. 1.2 million blocks. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, we I mean, uh, the, uh, obviously all the lava is still down at the bottom there. So that's going to be staying because I really like the way that it looks. The things that do have to go are all of the floating blocks. You can see that's a floating block there. There's a few of them, and then this pillar that is underneath all the obsidian there, obviously that's going to be going too, but that obsidian is where our farm is actually going to be going. So that that there is going to be our witch hut, and then this perimeter around it will stop any mobs from spawning in that area, making this thing 
the most efficient thing possible. Now it's actually been ages since we've taken a look at the witch farms themselves. Now the reason that I'm saying witch farms is because we took Il Mango's design and we actually mixed it up a little bit. Instead of using redstone clocks, we used trip wires and trip wire hooks to automatically detect the witches and then drop them out instantly. But we never actually tested it against the other original witch farm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave two versions of Minecraft running overnight. And this one is going to be the shifting floors with the trip wires. The other one is, of course, going to be the redstone clock one. And we'll see which one comes out more efficient. Well, um, yeah, I kind of didn't think that that through, really. Wow, really? That many? That many item drops over one night? I mean, how much redstone is that? <laughs> I think whatever we build is going to be more than enough. Because... Yeah, I mean... That is... That's like a full inventory of redstone. In one night and more than. Because all of the hoppers are totally filled up. And also, there's plenty of items just sat on the floor there. I can't believe this. I've messed up my testing. Why am I so useless? I'm such a useless Minecraft player. I really am. So I think given the results of both tests being very, very impressive, I'm going to use Il Mango's design simply because it seems like an easier design to build and more importantly, it seems less likely to go wrong. I don't want to have to fix these things with witches spawning on the inside. That would be horrible. So this is the design that we're going to be going for. Anyway, for the time being, we're going to move away from the witch huts because I want to do a little bit of work on Sahara. And I know that Iskal and Grian have been hard at work building up the actual structure itself, and I haven't seen it yet. So let's pop through to the shopping district and see what's going on. This place is still totally, totally ridiculous. I don't really know what to say about the Nether Hub. I'm fairly certain that this is the shopping district, and that's a beautiful logo. Right, here we are. In theory, it should be... Wow. <laughs> oh my word, it is enormous, isn't it? So this, wow, look how many mobs there are. Holy mackerel. <laughs> um, but this is, yeah, the beginnings of the structure. And yeah, it is definitely a warehouse, isn't it? Good grief. Okay, well, this is going to look spectacular once it's done. And I cannot wait to start creating some of the redstone and all of the warehousey bits where we're going to be moving the items from this section off into the shop front section, which I believe is just over here. Yep, there it is. The tiny little shop front. Very, very cool. Absolutely awesome. So fantastic work by those two. And I just can't wait to start getting redstone into this thing. Buildings aside, I think the main thing that we need to work on is our marketing strategy. We need to get our name out there on the Hermitcraft server. And Iskal, Green and I have come up with a strategy that we think is going to work really quite nicely. Hello guys. This, I think, is the first official architect meeting that involves all three members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, we've got a yeah. VIP awesome <laughs> I mean, he hasn't earned his quartz yet he hasn't right. got a fancy chair because he hasn't earned it brand new I, f I feel like i'm the child at the end of the table at a diner you know they have to bring out the special chair yeah. but okay i'll take it anyway let's get down to business guys because we've got a big project oh if, if we're getting down to business i have to put my business mustache on <laughs> Business moustache, a moustache for your moustache for when you mean real business. Yeah, 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 right, absolutely. Right, he knows it's serious. Um, okay, so as we all know, Sahara is well underway. The project is making so much progress, and we've got big plans. We've sorted out all the design and stuff, but we need to let our competitor, which is Concorp, know yeah. that what's coming. We need to give them a fair warning, I feel. Yeah, yeah, I, I, think, I think that's fine. We, we yeah. don't want to play rough. We, we're nice people. Yeah, okay. But I'm not entirely sure what to do, but I've got I got an idea. I'm gonna see if you guys are on the same vibe. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so curious. what 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 is Sahara? What is the in real life, in real life? 
Okay, geography. Um, come on, it's <laughs> Mumbo. It's a what's desert. The point in a second, a desert. What's the point in a second mustache if you don't know things when you put it <laughs> yeah. on? Yeah. Like, <laughs> does, that, does, does that? Look, yeah. okay, Iskal is dressed like a very typical geography teacher right now, so I thought I'd pass it over to him. All right, okay. yeah, go on. Yeah, this you said is it. my architect suit. <laughs> geography teacher, what are you talking about? Okay, okay so let's, let's stay on the It's map. a desert. It's, it's a, a desert. desert. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm proposing we dump a desert on Concord. <laughs> <laughs> we cover the whole of Concord in sand. Lots I mean, and lots. That, I mean, that's a, a big business opportunity for Concorp, though. I mean, they could. Yeah, just I know. Sell They're on... totally gonna sell it. They're just gonna sell the sand. Yeah. But yeah. It Cop would be. gonna come online and he's gonna be like, "Oh, look at this! Who can collect all this uh, sand? It'll be you have fifteen shulker boxes." Hey, here we go. Okay, guys, and we've got fifteen shulker boxes yeah. full of sand. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's a great idea, though. I like it. It's, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, let's scare Concorp then. Should we head on over? Yeah, sounds good mm -hmm. to me. Have you ever been to Concorp? I've not. I've only ever flown over it. It's a bit intimidating. It is quite yeah. scary. What is that laser up there? That's... Oh, that's yeah. Their, yeah, that's their satellite dish. That's crazy. I once walked in and had a piece of cake, and it tasted greedy and corporate. <laughs> 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 it wasn't nice at all. <laughs> But all right, should we try and uh, get it? Because we're basically just going to cover all of this in sand. But I feel like it's only right that we use the front door. So yeah. it says, if you die, if you could dye the sheep blue, you are deemed worthy of entering Concorp. And I don't know exactly what this means, but I'm just going to go for it. Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what? How did he do that? How did he do that? <laughs> no. I think we've been deemed worthy. No, it didn't go blue. It went back to oh. red. Yeah, I'm trying. That That is the... I don't understand this. Is the joke that we're not worthy? The joke is that we're not worthy. I mean, I, Mumbo, you're a technical player since I'm the geography teacher. You can you can explain what's going on here. I, I'm I, I, I'm I, losing know, my mind. I, I'm getting a bit tired. I think I might just, I, I, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I can, I, I'll be a substitute. This Why is, is there an Age of Empires soundbite here? It's the Vex. It's like, hello. Is that what they? Is that the actual sound that they oh, make? Yeah, the, yeah. 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 Dude, dudes, that's from Age of Empires yeah. One. Yeah, it's a reference to it. Yeah. This is actually an Easter egg in Minecraft that came in 1.12, I believe. Okay. That no one noticed. They that they will re-die sheep. They will. Yeah. They will die so the head. joke is, we're not worthy. Yeah. No one's worthy. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. We're going in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Forget this. <laughs> Whatever. That's the coolest thing ever, though. That's completely blown my mind. Anyway, sheeps aside, we placed a desert. And two hours later, this is what we've got. So up at the top there, we have got AT standing for architect, covering up the Concorp logo. And then if we pop through here, Sahara is coming. <laughs> I mean, check out this. We really have... <laughs> We have completely covered this place. And I have to say, I actually think it looks quite cool. Like, I, I've, I've got to say, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Cub decided to keep this. Because it actually looks pretty sweet. <laughs> now, we decided not to cover up the buildings because there's complicated redstone contraptions inside here. And we didn't want to mess with them or break anything. But all of the floor has been completely covered up. And as I say... Yeah, this is good. This is very good. So I think I think we have warned the people of Concorp that Sahara means business. Now let's pop back over to my base. And by base, I mean a creative world version of the Hermitcraft server where my witch hut is. <laughs> no way. So I accidentally went onto the wrong Hermitcraft test world and I found the original plans for the sphere. Th Whoa. It's freaky how much has changed. So that is my original island. If this area feels very empty without Grian's base, and this looks very empty without the city around it, I'd totally forgotten. How crazy is this? And I was really considering doing that, having stone and like cobblestone and things like that spinning out around the edge. That is 
<laughs> That's awful looking. Anyway, now that I've found the actual Hermitcraft testing world and located my witch hut, which by the way, this is what this area looked like before we destroyed it with all of those carpet bombers. It's quite impressive to see how much land was cleared, 1.2 million blocks. Uh, the reason that I'm in here is because I want to find out what layers my shifting floors are going to be going on. So I've just looked at Il Mango's video and apparently they start here and then the next floor will be on this level and then the final floor will be on that level right there. So there'll be three layers of shifting floors and this is the outline. So it turns out that we were actually quite good when we were building up this witch farm during the live stream and I actually managed to build up the border in the perfect area, it's the perfect bottom layer. So this right here, this outline, is how big the bottom layer is going to be. And then two blocks above it, we're going to have another platform. And then above that, we're going to have another platform. And this right here is the beginnings of the witch hut. This is it, this is where it begins. So all of our witches are going to be dropping out the floor here and they're going to be falling onto some hoppers, which are probably going to be on around about that level there. And they're going to be picking up all the items, chucking them into item transportation systems, zipping the items out the edge of the hole, and then into some form of ridiculous storage system, which is going to be holding all of our bits. And I honestly cannot wait to get this thing up and running because infinite redstone seems like a pretty good deal to me Oh, uh, would you look at that? I've actually just built the thing. I hadn't realized I'd built the thing, but this is it, This is it. I mean, it's a small little thing in it. I always forget how tiny the actual body of a witch farm is now How confident am I feeling pretty confident? Pretty confident. I'm feeling confident. Yep <laughs> Look at that. How ridiculous does that look? That looks so silly. So ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that is just a tiny little block. You would barely be able to notice it. And yet that, that is the thing that is going to be providing all of the items from this point forth. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, I really wanted to spend some time getting those things mapped out because it was kind of stressing me out not knowing where my witch farm was going. So now that that's done, there's actually something that I quickly want to show you in the redstone testing world. Now, Iskal has been working really, really hard on a lot of the redstone circuits. I mean, me and him have been going back and forth about some of the issues and some of the things that we're running into building up the Sahara system, but we are making some good progress. So for those of you who haven't been keeping up, this is the redstone system that I created as the shulker, loader, and unloader. This is the thing that is actually going to be transporting the items over to the player. And you can see there is the actual item collection system. Then over here, we have got Iskal's awesome design for the diamond counter because, of course, you know, we need to charge the hermit's money and we want to make sure that the redstone actually automates this process. So this system here, using some really interesting redstone logic, actually counts through the number of diamonds that have been inputted into the system, or I think it counts through the number of diamonds that are required for the player to put in, which is super, super smart. And now this is the area that we've been working on. So this little button selector panel right here will select the order quantity. So for example, if you order one set of carrots, so it's one diamond for eight stacks of carrots, you can also choose the number of orders you want to put through. So this button right here would be the default, so that is eight stacks of carrots, but if you want 16 stacks, then you can hit this button and that will flick it over. And if you want, say for example, 32 stacks of carrots, you're really hungry for carrots for some reason, then you hit that button and that is selected right there. And the way that you order things is you walk up to this chest and as you can see, we've got everything renamed. We throw out one of the items, the hopper picks it up and it gets selected as you just saw right there. And then the item ends up back in the chest. So this is super, super smart and it's going to work absolutely seamlessly. And I've got to say, once we knit all of these different things in together, because currently they kind of all spread out, I think it's gonna look amazing. Total side note, but I just spotted this next to the redstone design we were working on. I showed this to Iskal the other day and he was completely blown away. It genuinely looks like magic. So here we have a dropper that's filled in with items. When we hit this note block right here, you can see that the item ends up in that hopper. So whatever note block you hit, that's where the item goes and it goes there instantly. <laughs> it's, it's the strangest thing and I can't remember where I saw it, but whoever found this, 
you're a genius. So hopefully that gives you an update on the Sahara project as well. We have got so many massive projects on the go at this point in time, it's quite difficult to keep up with everything that's going on. Obviously the Mumbucks, Hermit coin type situation, uh, we haven't really mentioned that in today's episode, but that's also something that I'm currently in the process of working on too. And then of course, yeah, we've got the Witch Hut, which hopefully mm -hmm. should be done soon. And then Sahara, which we're in the middle of working on, as I say, it's all kicking off and everything seems very exciting, which is pretty impressive considering we're currently on episode 82. Usually by this point in the Hermitcraft season, things begin to slow down a tiny bit, but I'm very happy to see that I mean, we just seem to be flying right now. We have the best projects ever. But sadly, for today, that is everything. That is everything I've got time for. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. Oh, and filming channel stuff, you know what to do. Link will be on the end screen.